Without further waffling, let's get started. So in this lesson, we're going to look at IELTS General Writing Task 1. And specifically, we're going to look at the formal letter. Though, I must say there isn't really much difference between formal, semi-formal and informal. A little bit of vocabulary and gram a very, very small part. Maybe 2% maybe of your vocabulary and grammar will change. But apart from that, the structure's the same. The language is basically 98% the same. So let's have a look at the formal letter first. Cool. So... Imagine you sit down on test day and this is what you see in front of you and it says task one. You should spend about 20 minutes on this task. Fine, so you've got 20 minutes, so you'd better act fast. Let's read the scenario because this outlines the scenario for the letter. It gives you the background information that you need. It says, you live in a room in college which you share with another student. However, there are many problems with this arrangement and you find it very difficult to work. Write a letter to the accommodation officer at the college. In the letter, describe the situation, explain your problems and why it is difficult to work, say what kind of accommodation you would prefer, write 150 words. What we can see here really are Two things, a background scenario that paints a picture of what's happening, right? Because all of a sudden you're a college student and you're complaining about your accommodation and you see three bullet points. These are critical and this is what we're going to look at. But before we do that, I want to show you my letter. This is what your letter should look like. This is what would get you an IELTS 9 or at least this deserves to get an IELTS 9. Sometimes the IELTS are really strict with their writing. Sometimes I see really, really good quality writing get poor scores and I think to myself maybe the IELTS is a little bit unfair with its writing. But anyway, take a close look at this one and I'm going to walk you through it and tell you why this would get an IELTS 9. Let me just read it to you quickly. This is 156 words. This is a top letter. Dear sir or madam, I'm writing to let you know that I am unhappy with my current living conditions. While the accommodation itself is fine, my housemate has become intolerable, making it almost impossible for me to work. I hope you will consider my situation favorably. So I have nailed paragraph one. That first bullet point, paragraph one, boom, done. Paragraph two, let me explain my situation. The trouble started about three months ago when my housemate first moved in. Prior to that, everything was fine. My old housemate was extremely considerate. My current housemate, however, stays up almost all night and plays incessantly loud music. As such, I have not been able to sleep properly and therefore cannot concentrate on my studies. That's bullet point, bullet point two. That's my second paragraph. Let's look at the third. Would you kindly transfer me or my housemate to another room? I would much prefer to live with someone who is quieter and more considerate of others. As long as it, is, as it is quiet, I don't mind with uh, whom I live with. Thank you for your consideration. Yours faithfully, Jay. Cool. Right. Why would this get an IELTS 9? Well, there are specific, there are four specific criteria that the examiners look for. In other words, what I mean by criteria is the examiners have a scoring uh, system, right? So they get your essay or they get your writing task one and they have a scoring system. And they tick boxes and they say, okay, you know, IELTS 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, uh, okay, here, here, here. And there are four things that they look at, okay? Only four, there are four things they look at. They're really important. First one is you write on topic, okay? You must keep to the topic. If you start writing about something else and you don't follow those bullet points, you're in trouble. Two. Use precise vocabulary. Three, use accurate grammar. Four, use a logical structure. Let's have a look first at topic. So topic is this. Topic, writing on topic means that you do not deviate from this prompt. Specifically, what it means is that you have understood this, you've understood the scenario, you have described the situation, you've explained your problems and why it's difficult to work, 
and you've said what kind of accommodation you would prefer. Now, of course, this becomes paragraph one, this is paragraph two, this is paragraph three. What's really important is you do not blend your paragraphs together. That's a hard thing to do. You need to keep them separate, right? You wanna just make sure that this paragraph is very separate from this paragraph and very separate from this paragraph, etc. So let's have a look at mine. Well, if we look closely, we can see paragraph one, I described the situation. Paragraph two, I explained the problems and difficulties in more detail. Paragraph three, I asked for different accommodation. In other words, what have I done? I have done all three of these, describe, explain, and say. Describe, explain, and I've asked for different accommodation. The second thing you need to be able to do is use precise vocabulary. Let's have a look at my vocabulary in this letter. I want to point out to you what that means precisely. Just don't leave me yet. We're actually going to write a letter. I'm going to get you to write a letter sentence by sentence. But just bear with me while I explain what you need to do to get that high score. It's very confusing. So let me explain, then we'll do it together and we'll write one. So get your pen out, we're just about to start. Let me just explain this a bit more. So vocabulary, well, first of all, there are phrases that you need to memorize. For example, I am writing to let you know that blah. So it's, vocabulary is not necessarily just single words. Vocabulary can be a phrase of say five words or it can be collocation, like pairs of words that come together. Let me show you some more. So conditions, this is a nice word, nice. Intolerable, beautiful adjective. What about this one? We've got almost impossible. Well, that's a phrase or a collocation of two words. What about this phrase? Consider my situation favorably. The trouble started prior to that. However, uh, extremely considerate plays incessantly loud music, transfer, there's just a single verb, and it's a nice one, quieter, more considerate, these are adjectives, right? But they're special types of adjectives. This one, I don't mind, phrase, consideration, just a good word. So you wanna use a variety of, you know, good, when you choose your words, only use words that you are 100% sure of. Don't use a word that you think, oh, that sounds good, but I'm not quite sure of the meaning. Yes, I'll put it in. Don't do that. Because if it's wrong, if it's semantically wrong, if the meaning is different than what you think, it's, 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 it's a bad thing to do. You're better off using a simple word that you're sure of the meaning. In other words, word choice is critical. Choosing words that are precise is what this is all about. But as I said, it's not just about single words. It's about phrases. It's about two words that come together like almost impossible or extremely considerate. Right, what else are we going to look at? We're going to look at grammar because to be honest, this is probably the hardest thing about the English language, especially written English language. Use accurate grammar. First thing we're going to look at are the verbs in my letter. I want to show you the verbs. So let's let's have a look at these verbs, right? Verbs. So every sentence has a verb. This one says, let you know. Well, it's a verb phrase. Am, present, has become, present perfect, is, present, hope, present, explain, present, started. What's this one? Past moved in. What? That's a verb plus a preposition. That's a phrasal verb. Was. Was. Stays up. Phrasal verb in the present. Have not been able. Ah, what is that? That's like a present perfect crazy verb. Present. Concentrate. Would. So we've got a modal verb. Would you transfer me? Would you prefer? Is. Here we've got a negative. Do not mind. Live. Thank. Cool. So we have a variety of verbs here. We've got, we use present simple, we use some past simple, we use some present perfect. Now, 
It's not about using a variety of verbs just to show off and say, I can use this one, this one, this one, this one. No. Again, it's about using grammar to be precise in terms of meaning. It's about selecting the present simple verb because that's the verb that expresses time as you want it to be expressed. Or the present perfect to express time as you want it to be expressed. Or perhaps you're describing something that happened in the past and finished in the past, so you will use past simple. So you don't just choose willy-nilly verbs, you choose to be specific, to be precise. Cool, let me show you some more uh, grammar here. Let's look at articles and nouns because this is, seems to be just a, an absolute killer for people. So here we've got the word, uh, let's look at this one here, conditions, conditions, plural. Here we've got the accommodation. So we've used the article the because it, we're talking about specific accommodation. Housemate, singular, situation, singular, situation. The trouble, specific trouble. So we must use this article. Months. Why months? Ah, three, more than one, three months ago. Housemate, fine, housemate, fine, music, fine. Studies, plural, uh, night, housemate, room. Others, plural, consideration. So the big killer with the nouns, of course, are two things. One, that you can identify when the noun requires the S. Is it one dog or two dogs? Is it, uh, what's, what, what did I use? Um, condition or conditions? The other thing is to consider our articles. Is it the accommodation? Because we're talking about specific known accommodation. Are we talking about an accommodation or just accommodation in general? You have to be precise with your article use. Um, adverbs and adjectives, when getting there, hold with me, I want to show you this, I want to show you this. Here's a beautiful adjective, unhappy. Living conditions, this is actually an adjective. Intolerable, great, fine, impossible, considerate, fine, all, loud, another, quieter, more considerate, quiet, excellent. And what about these adverbs here? Well, we've got the almost impossible. We've got favorably, we've got extremely considerate, incessantly loud, sleep properly, almost all night, and kindly transfer me. Fine, uh oh, what's going on here? Whoop, I knew it was gonna do that. Let me bring it back. Prepositions, just quickly, let's look at the prepositions. So you're unhappy with, it's impossible for, the trouble started about three months ago. Moved in, prior to, stays up, concentrate on, live with, live with, thank you for. These little words, with, to, in, on, etc. These are critical for precision. You have to get your prepositions exactly right. If you choose the wrong one, then it just sounds a little bit odd. It just sounds a little bit strange. Finally, I want to show you sentences. So when you write your letter to get a nine, to get a nine, you have to write a mixture of simple short sentences and complex longer sentences. This is what the examiners look for in the letter. So they can sort of see, they can see the length of your sentences and they can also see words that coordinate or um, uh, connect sentences together like because or that or which or where you know how you're writing a simple sentence like subject verb object and you put a where and then you can put another one next to it and you can plug them together to make a complex sentence so you want complex sentences but if you're not confident with your grammar then stick to short sentences much better to be clearer than complex and unclear. Simple clarity beats complex unclarity. Doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean. So you can see that my sentences are, most of them are long, most of them are long, a couple of short ones, but most of them are complex. So this is an IELTS 9. Last thing I wanna show you, and this is where we're about to move into you writing your letter. I wanna show you how to use a logical structure because 
one of the things that you can do to make your test day a lot easier and to help you a lot is to learn a logical structure learn a struct memorize a structure so when you walk in on test day you have in your mind a cheat sheet it's kind of like a cheat sheet but you're not cheating you're just being smart because you've memorized a very good structure so let's have a look at my structure here let me just get out my red pen again so I've got the greeting fine that's easy you just memorize that one memorize okay now we move into the paragraphs so reason this is paragraph one fine I can't really memorize this paragraph two fine this is straight from those bullet points those dot points paragraph three fine ending fine this we just memorize uh, sign off fine we just memorize and your name of course you just memorize so there we go, we've got those three. So really, the greeting you memorize, the ending you memorize, sign off a name you just memorize, you have to just write three paragraphs in effect. You're just writing three paragraphs. Now, what you can do and what I wanna show you today is how to memorize the first phrase of each paragraph because each paragraph will always be the same in IELTS writing task one the first one will always give a reason so therefore you can memorize this I am writing to let you know that something the second one will always be an explanation so you can always start with this let me explain my situation the third one the third paragraph will always be a request or a suggestion and so you can always use this phrase here memorize this would you kindly and then you just add whatever verb you want there. Would you kindly give? Would you kindly send? Would you kindly drive me to the airport? Whatever it is. So what are we memorizing? Well, we're memorizing, um, we're memorizing this. We're memorizing this phrase up to here. Memorizing this phrase up to here. Memorizing this phrase up to here. We're memorizing this entire ending. We're memorizing the sign off. And of course you memorize your own name. So in fact, all we have to write is this part here, this part here, this part here. Cool, but that's, that's where it starts to get tricky. So let's start. I think you're ready now to uh, begin writing. So get out your pen and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you sort of sentence by sentence how to write this. I'm gonna show you what I wrote and then you're going to sort of copy. I want you to copy what I write um, because obviously my letter is good. I'm a native English teacher and I've, I've taken the IELTS. Um, so I'll show you. I'll show you exactly what to do. So on test day, you sit down. You look at the question prompt. Okay. You know you don't really need to read this stuff. You know, spend 20 minutes, fine. Write 150 words, fine. But you really need to understand the scenario. So let's read this again. It says, you live in a room in college which you share with another student. However, there are many problems with this arrangement, i.e. living with the other student, and you find it very difficult to work. Write a letter to the accommodation officer at the college in the letter. This is your paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three. Describe the situation. Explain your problems, why it's difficult to work. Say what kind of accommodation you would prefer. Of course, don't blend your paragraphs. This is really important. You want to keep them very separate from each other. Keep them separate. Fine. So that's it. Paragraph one, two, three. Paragraph one, give reason for writing. Paragraph two, explain in detail. Paragraph three, request or suggest. This is what your letter is going to look like from all the, the starts of the sentences. These are the bits that we memorize. So you might want to pause this video and write this down because you can use this for every single writing task one letter that you have to write. How to write the greeting. Dear Sir, Madam. That's easy. How do we know that? Because if you look down here, it tells you how to start your letter. Dear Sir or Madam, capital S, capital M, comma. I want you to write now into the chat, Dear Sir or Madam, exactly like this. Let's write this letter from beginning to end. You have 30 seconds.
Too easy, too easy, too easy. Right, paragraph one. Paragraph one, now we have to start to use our language. We have to use our, we have to use our creativity because we have to th imagine, we have to imagine what it's like to be living in college and to be unhappy with your accommodation. So we're gonna have to use that scenario, but now what we need to do is uh, we need to describe the situation. We're gonna describe the situation, but we're gonna describe it in general. Very general, because if you see in the second paragraph, the second one here, this is where we go into detail. So this one is detail, right? This one is general. This is just a general description of the situation. Then we go into the detailed problems. Don't start getting into details here. This is not for detail, this is just general description. Really how you can think of this is your reason for writing. Why are you writing this letter? So I'm writing to let you know that I, we're going to use this phrase. I want you to copy this exactly. So this is what I wrote. So read this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this to you. Then I want you to sort of copy it to write your own, okay? So I'm gonna, so I'm giving the reason for writing, I'm describing the situation, I'm keeping it general, and I'm gonna use this phrase, I'm writing to let you know that I, so this is mine, I'm writing to let you know that I am unhappy with my current living conditions. While the accommodation itself is fine, my housemate has become intolerable, making it almost impossible for me to work. I hope you will consider my situation favorably. That's what I wrote, okay? Now I want you to write yours, but don't get into specifics. You're describing a general situation. You're not yet talking about specific problems. You have three minutes to write your answer describing the situation, your living conditions. You have three minutes starting now. One minute left. You're describing the situation in general, not going into specifics. You're not talking about specific issues. You're just sort of introducing the situation. And you're beginning by the paragraph by writing, I'm writing to let you know that I blah, blah, blah. Thirty seconds.
If you're on YouTube, type your sentence into the comments below. Don't forget to click like. Please click like. I love it when you click like. And subscribe if you want. Three minutes is up. Cool. If you haven't finished, that's cool. You can go back, you can pause it and uh, finish your first paragraph there. But that's probably uh, enough time. Let's, let's have a look at what we're doing next. We're going to write paragraph two. We're going to write paragraph two. We've written paragraph one where we gave a reason. Gave the reason for writing. We gave the, re the general reason for writing. Paragraph two, we're going to get into some specifics. We're going to start to describe some details. We're going to explain your problems. Okay, so we need to get into the specifics here. Or, or should I call this uh, details? Details. Uh, details, yes. And why it's difficult to work. So there are two things here. We're going to give some details and we're also going to explain why it's difficult to work. Okay. This is what we're going to do in paragraph two. Paragraph two. It's explanation. So explain in detail. Let's have a look. I'm going to read you mine, okay? And I want you to use, look at this phrase here. Let me explain my situation. I want everybody to use this same phrase. Let me explain my situation. The trouble started about three months ago when my housemate first moved in. Prior to that, everything was fine. My old housemate was extremely considerate. My current housemate, however, stays up almost all night and plays incessantly loud music. As such, I have not been able to sleep properly and therefore cannot concentrate on my studies. So, what have I done here? Well, well, what are the problems? The problems are, 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 are. my current housemate stays up almost all night and plays incessantly loud music. Okay, so I've got two problems. I've got problem one here, and I've got problem two here. Great, because it said here problems. Now, why is it difficult to work? What does that do to me? Well, as such, I have not been able to sleep properly, and I therefore cannot concentrate. I cannot concentrate on my studies. In other words, that's why it's difficult to work. Cool, your turn. I want you to write your answer. I'll give you three minutes to get into the details to explain the problem or the problems and why it's difficult to work. Your three minutes starts now.
30 seconds left. 30 seconds left. I just sort of realized that three minutes is way too short to write these paragraphs. Uh, if you, you're supposed to spend about 20 minutes on this letter. Now, if you memorize the greeting, uh, the sign off, the ending and your name, etc., and you memorize those first phrases of the paragraphs, then you should be able to spend about five minutes on those three paragraphs, on each paragraph rather. So five minutes, first one, five minutes, second, five minutes, third, that's 15 minutes. Then sort of five minutes to, to read the question, five minutes to write the greeting, etc., and sign off, and that'll equal about 20 minutes. So in the uh, IELTS, spend about five minutes on each paragraph. I've uh, left it too short here, but you can go back, press pause, and finish your paragraph. Cool. All right, let's, let's, let's keep going. How to write paragraph three. Well, what's paragraph three about? This is where we request. So here it says, say what kind of accommodation you would prefer. Say what kind of accommodation you would prefer. Really, what we're doing here is we're requesting something. We're requesting something. We're requesting something. Sometimes it's either going to be two things in the IELTS writing task one. You're either going to request, like here, or perhaps, perhaps you're going to suggest which is a little bit different. So you might request or you might suggest. Um, so yes, let's have a look here. So requesting or suggesting, fine. All right, what's going on? I think, what's going on? Why can't I skip to the next slide? There we go. So how do we request? Well, there's a certain phrase in English where we say, and this is very formal, very polite, would you kindly, would you kindly, would you kindly? And then we put any verb here. We put any f verb here. Like, like, would you kindly pay for my lunch? Or would you kindly bring me a drink? Or would you kindly um, turn off the TV? Okay, this is a request. And this is just a verb that you just, you fit in here. But this, you just memorize. Would you kindly? Okay? So let's have a look at mine. It says, would you kindly transfer me or my housemate to another room? I would much prefer to live with someone who is quieter and more considerate of others. As long as that is quiet, I don't mind whom I live with. So say what type of accommodation you would prefer. I've just said, I don't really care what type of accommodation as long as it's quiet. So that's fine. I, I have answered the question there. I've sort of taken that question, manipulated it a bit. Cool, so now I want you to request, say what type of accommodation you would prefer, use this phrase here. Write your answer, I'm gonna give you th three minutes, but again, you can pause it, come back, and spend five minutes.
One more minute. Thirty seconds. Cool, that was three minutes. Feel free to spend another couple of minutes on this paragraph. As I said, five minutes per paragraph is a good idea. And then another five minutes just to write the introduction and the, uh, the greeting and whatnot and to read the question. Cool, all right, so we're up to the final part now. We've done the most difficult part. Now all we need to do is write the ending sign off and your name, that's it. And this is simple. This is we just memorize this. Uh, it's 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 very straightforward. You can just if you're requesting something, just memorize this word for word. Thank you for your consideration. Okay, memorize that phrase. Full stop. It's perfect. That is perfect English. Thank you for your consideration. Memorize this. Yours faithfully. Comma. And then just put your name with remember to put a capital letter okay thank you for your consideration yours faithfully tom mary whatever your name is that's it that's it so memorize this that's the last part of your letter that's the ending the sign off and your name so copy this into the chat or the comments below word for word same punctuation you have 30 seconds Cool. All right. Done. You've just written an IELTS writing task one formal letter and well, it depends, <laughs> depends on vocabulary and grammar, but the structure's excellent. The formatting's perfect. Everything's good. One thing I'll say to you, if you're not confident with your grammar, if you're not confident with your vocabulary, if you feel like you need some help, check out e2language.com. Let me just write it on the screen. Because what we do is we offer feedback. We offer feedback. Go to this website. Whoops, that's a W. Let me start again. www.e2language.com. Check that out. What we do is we offer tutorials, one-on-one -on -one tutorials with the teacher. You'll sit down with the teacher on Zoom, which is a platform like Skype, one-on-one -on, -one on the computer, right? And the teacher will have your essay and screen share with you and go through with you and tell you what you're doing wrong and tell you how to do it right. It's the fastest way to improve. We also offer written feedback. So you submit your essays through the online course. The teacher receives them, gives you written feedback and sends them back to you. Tells you what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. But more importantly, what you're doing wrong so you can improve. So we have courses that include tutorials, written feedback. We do speaking uh, tutorials. Uh, we've got all of the practice questions, everything you need at this website here, e2language.com. So check that out if you're worried if you need help all right uh, whoop you did that let's recap let's recap let's think about what we learned in this lesson so we looked at this this is the structure that you want to use for your letter you want to have a greeting paragraph one two and three you want to have an ending a sign off and a name 
course, you can just memorize the greeting, ending, sign off, and name. As we just saw, this only takes 30 seconds to write. 30 seconds. That takes 10 seconds to write. Paragraph one will be the reason for writing. Paragraph two is the explanation, more details. And paragraph three is the request. Really, these are the things that you want to, re that you want to memorize. You want to memorize the greeting. You want to memorize the first phrase of the reason for writing. You want to memorize this sentence. You want to memorize this phrase, this sentence, this phrase, and well, hopefully you don't have to memorize your name. Hopefully you know that already. But this, all of this here is about, I don't know what this would be about. This would be about 25% of your letter memorized. The rest of it, goes here and this is where you need to just watch your grammar and vocabulary so the other 75 percent go into your paragraphs cool uh, and so this was mine you can see it here word for word this would be well this deserves to be an IELTS 9 this deserves an IELTS 9 and that is that that's e2language.com cool thanks for watching don't forget to click like subscribe and leave a lovely comment even a smiley face will do uh yes thanks very much for coming i appreciate it and check out the other videos we've got on offer and check out e2language.com if you need some serious help for your ielts thank you my name's jay and i'll see you soon whoops <laughs>